when the Russians eventually introduced superior new fighters such as the Yak-7, LA-5 and US Lendlease Bell P-39 Aero Cobras, the Luftwaffe lost air superiority over the Eastern Front. In North Africa, tropicalized Messerschmitt Bf-109s were assigned to Rommel's Africa Corps. With weak opposition from Allied forces, the Bf-109s controlled the aerial battlefield. Desert ace Hans Joachim Marseille was credited with 158 victories against the Allies' Desert Air Force. With the success of Operation Torch, which enabled the Allies to advance into Tunisia and Libya, the Desert Air Force was replenished with over 500 fighters and fighter bombers. Hurricanes and Kitty Hawks perfected the art of close air support with the British 8th Army. A valuable lesson for future campaigns. With North Africa in Allied hands, it became the springboard for the invasion of Sicily in July 1943 and Italy two months later. The potency of air power had been graphically illustrated to the United States when Japan attacked Pearl Harbor on December the 7th, 1941. It caught the world's most powerful nation totally unprepared. Leading the attack was the carrier-based Mitsubishi Zero. Its superb maneuverability and heavy armament enabled it to destroy large numbers of Allied aircraft in the early years of the war. In 1941, the Curtis P-40 was the most advanced US fighter. Used to fight the Japanese, it was not capable of matching the Zero. And the Philippines quickly fell to the invaders. In the Pacific, the first all-carrier battle took place at Midway. There, the Grumman F-4F Wildcat made its operational debut. It was the first of a long line of rugged, carrier-borne US fighters. The capture of Guadalcanal commenced in August. US Marine Corps Wildcats from the carriers Wasp, Enterprise and Saratoga provided air support for the Marines' first amphibious landings of the war. During the Battle of Santa Cruz two months later, 50 torpedo bombers and 24 Wildcats took off from the carriers Hornet and Enterprise for the Solomon Islands. By chance, they ran into a group of 78 Japanese attack aircraft, including 55 Zeros from three carriers. It was one of the largest air battles of the Pacific War, with more or less equal losses on both sides. In 1942, the US Army's twin-boom Lockheed P-38 Lightning debuted in the Pacific. Two of the most successful US naval fighters the Grumman F6F Hellcat and Vought F4U1 Corsair were instrumental in turning the tide against the Zero's dominance in the defeat of Japanese land-based air forces on Tarawa and the Gilbert Islands in late 1943. In the Battle of the Philippine Sea, 200 aircraft launched from nine Japanese carriers were destroyed by US fighters or ground fire in what became known as the Marianas Turkey Shoot.
During the last two years of the Pacific War, the majority of the Navy's fighter force consisted of F-6F Hellcats. Over 2,500 were delivered in 1943 alone. The F-6F's engine was the most powerful available, and its high speed and rate of climb enabled its pilots to destroy over 6,000 Japanese aircraft. As a result, the Pacific Fleet gained supremacy wherever it operated. The Hellcat was extremely rugged and could keep flying even when severely damaged by enemy fire. The Battle of Later Gulf saw the first attacks by Japanese kamikaze suicide pilots. 14 kamikaze units were operational in the Philippines, each equipped with 12 Zeros. In the following months, kamikaze attacks using fighters and bombers would be responsible for sinking or seriously damaging some 12 Allied carriers the most vulnerable of which were the US carriers with wooden flight decks. From early 1944 in Europe, the Allies mounted a round-the-clock strategic bombing campaign on Germany. In defense of the Reich, every German fighter was pressed into service. Whole squadrons of BF 109s and FW 190s engaged the American B 17 and B 24 bombers. They caused terrible losses. German fighter aces became national heroes. But their success was short lived. Long-range American fighters escorted the American bombers. The North American P-51 Mustang proved superior to the earlier Republic P-47 Thunderbolt and P-38 Lightning in the role. When the RAF experimentally replaced the P-51's American Allison engine with a Rolls-Royce Merlin, the Mustang's performance was instantly transformed, with a top speed of over 400 miles per hour. With drop tanks to extend their range, the P-51 and P-47 could both escort bombers deep into Germany. Known to the bomber crews as their little friends, they could successfully fight off any attack by German interceptors. Armed with six machine guns and able to carry a 450 kilogram bomb load, the Mustang was one of World War II's most capable multi-role fighters. In the summer of 1944, hundreds of a new and deadly weapon were launched on Britain. Germany's pilotless flying bomb, the V-1. At around 400 miles an hour, they were extremely difficult to intercept, and their 800 kilogram high explosive load made them a dangerous target. However, RAF Mosquito, Spitfire and Tempest pilots devised special tactics to shoot down the doodlebugs with their 20mm cannon. Some pilots flipped them over with their wingtips, forcing them to dive into the ground. That same summer, more than 2,000 Allied fighter aircraft overwhelmed the Luftwaffe during the D-Day invasion of Normandy. Germany was now fighting for its life, relying on the Luftwaffe to protect the Reich with outdated BF 109s and newly developed FW 190s. But a major new aviation milestone was about to be realised. The Germans had been developing the Messerschmitt ME 262, the world's first operational jet fighter. They also introduced the revolutionary rocket-powered interceptor fighter, the ME-163 Comet. 
However, under the relentless onslaught from all fronts and the devastating bombing raids on their cities, the Germans quickly ran out of resources to sustain this new technology. With overwhelming odds, lack of fuel and mounting casualties, the only outcome was defeat. In the dying months of the conflict, the Allies were involved in a deadly race to capture what they could of German scientists and advanced aviation technologies. Allied scientists had also been developing jet-powered aircraft. The experimental Bell XP-59 had its maiden flight in the United States in October 1942 using British supplied engines. The first operational Allied jet fighter was the Gloucester Meteor. Closely followed by the de Havilland Vampire, both of which went on to serve with air arms overseas. The Swedes had been developing their own jet fighters, manufactured by Saab. These included the J-21R, which used the same British engine as the Vampire, and later the Saab J-29, Europe's first swept-wing fighter. America's first operational jet fighter, the P-80 Shooting Star, flew in January 1944, at over 500 miles an hour, powered by a British engine. The jet age had begun. Captured German aerodynamic research found its way into the Korean War in two evenly matched fighters, the US F-86 Sabre and the Soviet MiG-15. They were both swept-wing aircraft based on German work from World War II. The MiG-15 had been built around a Rolls-Royce Neen jet engine. But to avoid having to buy these from the British, the Russians reverse-engineered the engine and manufactured it for themselves. It was the first time the jet aircraft met in conflict. Another US jet fighter, the F-9F Panther, also saw action in Korea. It was the first jet-powered fighter in widespread service with the US Navy and Marine Corps and the first Navy jet to shoot down an enemy aircraft. Although outperformed by the Soviet MiG-15, it brought down five of the swept-wing enemy fighters. At the beginning of the Cold War, both the US and USSR poured vast amounts of money into the development of a second-generation fighter. When the Bell X-1 research aircraft broke the sound barrier in 1947, it spurred the development of fighters capable of supersonic speeds. This development work produced the first of the US Century series of supersonic fighters. These included the F-101, which flew coast to coast across America in three hours, five minutes, averaging just over a thousand miles an hour. The Century series also included the F-102 Delta Dagger, equipped with guided missiles and radar. The Soviet Union had its own supersonic second-generation fighters, the MiG-19 and the MiG-21. Over 10,000 MiG-21s were built, far exceeding the production of any other jet fighter. The Vietnam War was the debut of one of the world's most successful twin-engined fighters, the F-4 Phantom II which first flew in 1958. The Phantom was designed as a multi-role fighter for the US Navy, but went on to serve with the US Air Force. More than 5,000 Phantom IIs have served with a dozen Air Forces, including the Royal Air Force. 
re-engined with the Rolls-Royce Spey turbofan, the RAF's Phantom became NATO's frontline workhorse over the divided Germany throughout the Cold War. It was one of the first Mach 2 fighters, and also one of the first to have an all-missile armament. During the 1960s, the French Mirage III became the most successful European-built Mach 2 fighter. It was exported throughout South America and the Middle East. The Mirage III and its stablemate, the Mystère, were both used by the Israeli Air Force during the Six-Day War of 1967. They carried out dawn attacks on Egyptian, Jordanian, Syrian and Iraqi airfields, destroying over 350 Arab aircraft. The British developed the Harrier jump jet in the early 60s. It was the world's first production vertical short takeoff and landing aircraft. The Royal Navy's Sea Harrier saw action in the Falklands War, where it destroyed 22 Argentine aircraft for no losses. The updated Harrier II deployed for combat for the first time during the 1991 Gulf War with the US Marine Corps. The mid-1970s saw the introduction of third-generation fighters. They were armed with basically the same weapons as their predecessors, but they introduced new levels of engine efficiency and manoeuvrability. The 